Hey friends, in this video, we're gonna take a look at how you can use a Digitact, a Digitone, or a Syntact as an amazing sequencer and MIDI controller for Ableton Live. Here's a preview of how awesome this can be. <laughs> so it may seem counterintuitive to just use a box like this that makes sound as just a MIDI controller, but the thing about it is that Electron sequencers are unbelievably full of amazing features for generative music, for jamming, for live performance, for songwriting, and they're just incredible. And I gotta say that when you combine the power of the sequencer on this thing, and then of course the routing and the access to stereo samples and all the other things that Ableton can do, you put these two things together, you got an amazing system set up. And so as always, if Ableton's your thing, it's my thing too, so make sure you subscribe for more content. Let's get it. All right, so let's blast through the settings on both Ableton and the Digitact here. If I click on settings and I go to MIDI config and I go to sync, you can see that I'm receiving the clock, okay? And I'm also receiving transport, all right? That's really important. Now in Ableton's preferences, we can see that the track and remote is switched on for the, the Digitact input and then the output is set to track, sync and remote, okay? So you gotta set it up like this if you wanna take advantage of what I'm talking about today. So again, all three of the Electron little black boxes like this, the Digitact, the Digitone, and the Syntact, all have the same feature where they all feature a MIDI sequencer. The top row here, these are the samples, okay? So this is the internal samples, and as you can see, when I click on any one through eight of the top buttons, we get the same page. But when we click on the nine through 16, we get a totally different page, and there are different parameters. That's because the lower row is dedicated to MIDI, okay? We're not gonna be using any sounds out of the Electron box. You can see there's no audio outputs coming out of here. There's just a USB cable and the power supply, right? So looking at this first track here, MIDI A through H, what we need to do is at the moment, there's no MIDI being sent from the box. So what we need to do is we need to set up the tracks to send out the MIDI notes that associate with the samples that I have here on my drum rack, okay? So in order to do that, we need to go into Assign, and you can see where everything is X'd out. What that means is that all the MIDI messages that you could send from these buttons, all of them have been turned off. So in order to turn them on, all we have to do is hold Function, and then I'm gonna turn on Channel. So you just have to push this encoder, all right? I'll switch to the next one, push this encoder, the next one, and the next one. I'm only gonna do four because I only have four available drums on this drum rack, but obviously you could do up to eight, okay. So, going back to the trigger page, let's go back to our first sample. Now, it's sending, we can see that it's sending MIDI, and if we look at this MIDI from, we're ch we've chosen the Digitact, and of course, we can see that we're receiving a note. But you can see that that note is playing in the wrong area. So I need to actually pitch this down to C3, and depending upon where you've put your drums, it'll obviously be in a different place, but mine is C3. So now, boom, and you can hear, that while this button is not velocity sensitive, at least it is gate sensitive. Or in other words, it will send a MIDI gate longer or shorter. And because my drum rack has been set up in this way, I can get pretty expressive control over at least how long the sample plays, right? Okay, so moving on to this one, this is gonna be C sharp three. Next one is D three. Next one is D sharp or E flat three. So now, awesome. Okay, and so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit function and yes, and that's gonna save the pattern. This is just a good thing to do. I'll show you why later. So now we're set up to use Electron's amazing sequencer. I gotta say, there is no better sequencer for live performance and no better sequencer, honestly, for churning out ideas really quick. So when we look at this page, we can see all these options that are available to us. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and make a pattern. So I don't know, I think I'm gonna go up to 140 beats per minute and if I hit play, check it out. We can see the Digitact is synced to Ableton Live, right? It's just playing at the tempo that Ableton Live is sending, right? We can see it says 140 at the top. That's nice. Okay, so what I can do is I can put in a couple drum hits, for my kick drum, let's go ahead and listen. Right, go to the snare. Right, so you can do it that way. Another way that you can do it is you can obviously just 
hit record and then hit play together and then you can live play which i think is a little bit better for me okay so my playing obviously wasn't exact so what you can do is you can go function quantize and right and we can quantize this maybe to i don't know 100 or something so we can get a little bit more of an accurate play okay so I have this beat going. Now, thus far, this is not any cooler than what Ableton's capable of doing on its own. But if I go into here and I add a couple more drum hits, let's go ahead and we'll look back at the kick drum and maybe I'll add two hits at the end. So I'm looking at the main menu. Now, if I hold these hits down, this is where all the magic happens. Check this out. Now condition has lit up, right? And now I can change the note condition. So I can say, all right, these hits, these drum hits will only fire 75% of the time, okay? And maybe I'll do another one, maybe right here, and I'll say that this one will only fire every 50% of the time. So now check it out. Right now we've got some variety going. Let's keep going. So maybe on this hat, let's go ahead and add some more hat hits in different areas. And what we'll do is we'll hold these down and instead of saying the condition is a percentage, let's go to maybe the second out of every three times it will play these four hat hits. Now check it out. right now see so not only do we have conditions for percentage but we also have conditions for the actual hits now there's something else that can be fun maybe what I'll do is I'll fill in a couple more hat hits and let's take a listen to something else that you can do so we also have velocity and what we can do instead of maybe just dialing the velocity in for each one of these hi-hat hits is we can live record them in and I'll just twiddle the knob check this out Now, even though you can't see this velocity setting moving, if I look at the hi-hat hits, we can see that it's highlighted. That means that this step has some automation data committed to it. So essentially, I'm just adding automation data to this hi-hat, and now I get this kind of varied and more interesting sound, right? Now, something else we can do that is just so amazing is we can also use the Digitac, Digitone, and Syntact as a MIDI controller when it comes to sending actual CC data over the knobs. So we can take over the macros of the drum rack with these. Okay, so let's go ahead and set that up. So when I go to here, we can see CC value. Okay, and of course, all these CC values have been disabled. All I have to do is hold function, click all these, and now you can see they all read zero. Okay, so these have now been enabled. So now I can head over to Ableton, turn on my MIDI mapping mode, and map all these knobs to the various macros. Now check this out. On this drum rack, I have made it so that this drum rack is containing a bunch of samples, and just by turning a knob, I can change the samples associated with that drum. So take a listen to this. Now the kick drum will be different. Now this drum rack is actually really amazing. You can use the top four macros here to change the actual sample associated with the kit. So now I've just randomized it. And some of the bottom controls are just kind of different parameters such as reverb and transposition. Okay, so check this out. <laughs> Let's randomize it. Now, I know I'm focusing on the Digitac stuff, and you might be really interested as to how I've built this drum rack, but at the end of the day, this drum rack is based on a bunch of different things that I teach in my live performance and live looping with Ableton Live course that I've built. I've created this course in addition to the three courses that I already have, songwriting, mixing, and sound design in Ableton Live, and 
what this fourth course is going to do is it's going to complete a total suite for learning Ableton Live. So if you like my teaching style and you're interested to find out when the live performance course actually comes out and when it's publicly available, you can sign up at this link up here or down in the description and comments and I'll let you know when that is released. All of the Seed to Stage courses get you access to our private Seed to Stage Discord where we share feedback for each other, we share mentorship and all kinds of other awesome resources and stuff like that. So if you're stoked about all that, I highly recommend that you check it out. Anyway, let's get back to it. Now that's all fine and good, but check this out. We can now use Electron Sequencer to not only sequence drum hits and the velocity associated with the drum notes and stuff like that, but we can also commit the parameter changes to the internal sequencer. All right, so check this out. What I can do is I can live record, for example, the change of this knob. Right, see that knob moving there? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so let's say we've got to a point where there's something that we really like. We're like, okay, this is a really cool loop or whatever. We can hit function and yes. Now what this has done is it's saved every single state of this whole thing, including the sequencer, to this pattern. And now I can start to mess with it and change it, okay? And I can always go back to that instantly. So check this out. So there's my new pattern, and if I hold function and go to reload, check it out. Back to what I was before. Let's do it again. Right, different sound. Now we're back. Awesome, so there are some other functions that are worth at least looking at. Another one I could do is just mute the tracks, for example, holding function. So I muted the snare, mute the kick, right? That's super fast. Another thing you can do is you can actually use this MIDI LFO. This LFO, instead of sending to the parameters inside of the internal sampler, you can send parameters down. Let's take a look at this. You can send it down CCs. Check that out. So you could use this LFO to actually change CCs on in, in Ableton, and you can go per track. So in this case, I have up to eight LFOs that I could be sending to Ableton. Super amazing, right? So truly, the opportunity here is immense not only for just for live performance, but being able to crank out really awesome drum beat ideas or whatever you're gonna be using this for, using the internal sequencer. A lot of folks that get into the Electron world really enjoy just how fast you can crank out novel stuff, right? You really can come up with really interesting things. What I think is an even more powerful combination than just using the internal box is to use the box as a sequencer into Ableton. Remember, this is making no sound on its own. It's just essentially a pretty awesome MIDI controller for Ableton. Cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this kind of thing, please like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.